So just got a question, you know, well, what in the heck can you do with a digital gauge? And I thought, you know, the best place to start would just be uh, by walking you through some of the, some of the basic features of, of the instrument. And what we're looking at here is just a, a, Testo, uh, a Testo 550. I have it set up for 410A. Uh, I've got it hooked up to a system that's not running. And um, so you can see, you know, we got uh, 215.8 on the low side, 216.5 on the high side. And what we're looking at on the top there, the 20, uh, 74.5 and the 74.3, those are our uh, uh, corresponding uh, saturation temperatures. So we're looking at uh, simply pressure and corresponding saturation. You can see at the very top of the display here, I have it set for uh, R410A, and I have it set for PSIG, which is pounds per square inch gauge, and then we got our, our battery indicator there. As I scroll through the menus, what you're going to see here, uh, first of all, is our temperatures. And you'll notice there really wasn't too much of a change there, right? The, the measured temperature and the saturation temperature are very close to the same because their uh, system is off and the, the refrigerant is saturated, which means it's a mixture of liquid and vapor. If I scroll down another time here, you'll see I got no, sub, no superheat and two tenths of a degree of subcooling, right? And that's more or less what we're looking at is the total uncertainty of the gauge at this point. So uh, the digital gauge itself is, um, you know, the, making a measurement of temperature with a clamp and it's making a measure of pressure with the, uh, uh, with the pressure transducers and uh, it's calculating the, the actual superheat and subcooling right at this time. So, you know, and those are just, you know, simply clamped down here. And, and again, everything's sort of shut off right now. So I just wanted to walk you through, through the basic menus. We hit that again, and now we're looking at uh, differential temperature between the, uh, between the two. And I'm just shooting this by hand on an iPhone. So, uh, you know, please excuse the unsteadiness. Now, if we take a look here uh, again at the, uh, at the instrument, we hit the mode key. This is pretty, some pretty slick stuff they've put into the gauges. Uh, right now, what we're looking at is a, is a timer on the left and then a, a measured temperature, excuse me, a measured pressure on the, on the right there at the right hand, lower right-hand corner, and that's 216.5 PSI. If I push start here, what you're going to see is that's going to start to flash up here, and it actually recorded my starting pressure. And what it's looking at now is my starting pressure, my measured pressure, and the difference between the starting and the measured pressure over time. And one of the cool things that this thing will do is it uses the gas laws and the temperature sensor. So it actually measures the, the, uh, it measures the temperature of the line, measures the, uh, the pressure. And, you know, obviously this is 410A in here, but if this was nitrogen in here, it would use the pressure-temperature relationship of nitrogen and the gas laws to determine if the system was leaking or stable. So really all you have to do on this is go to, you know, the mode key, uh, Go to the mode key on this thing um, to get this to get this started up. Press start, and then it's going to just continue to uh, flash that. And in a couple seconds here, we should get a one up there, meaning it's gone through one minute of time elapsed. And then I'll just go ahead and stop this. But this uses uh, Boyle's law to determine that. And there we go. There's the one right there. Then when I push the stop, it's going to show me my final pressure, my measure temp, and a, and a drop. Now, if this had changed in temperature, like if it had gotten hotter, it should have also increased in pressure. And if this had not changed in pressure, it would actually show a leak. It would indicate a leak here because uh, it knows that nitrogen would change in pressure with a corresponding change in temperature. So that's, uh, that's um, you know, the, the basics of that one. Now, if we go to hit the mode key again, um, this is our, our vacuum mode. And this is more of a vacuum indicator. And right now, it's obviously not reading inches of mercury. It's reading... Uh, uh, 216 PSI because that's the pressure we have on here. This is a, a mode for evacuation. It's more of a roughing gauge than a micron gauge because obviously it, it doesn't read near in the, uh, in the micron level. And we hit it again. We're back to uh, differential temperature and uh, uh, differential temperature and pressure. We can see we can scroll through the menu. So that's, that's the basics of a gauge when you're looking at it. You have uh, nine buttons. You have a set button which allows us to change your settings start stop button and also refrigerant button so when I hit this you see the refrigerant at the top flashing I can change this up or down to change the refrigerant then hit refrigerant again to store it and it'll calculate those corresponding saturation temperatures I have a min max mean key which allows me to uh, as the units running to, hit, to show the minimum reading the maximum reading and the mean uh, p equals zero which is for preserving the pressure transducers 
uh, backlight button over here and then our power button over here and then obviously the two arrows to scroll through the menus. So that's just a, the basic overview. I'm going to go ahead and start this thing up and we'll get an idea of, of what we can see with it now.